Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we're going to build a new Xcode app with HomeKit. So join me in Xcode. We're going to select a new iOS app. Let's give this app a name. We'll call this My First Home and then select a team and an organization identifier such as com.beta.beta.homekit. You want this to be a unique identifier for your app. All right, so there's our bundle identifier. Our interface is going to be Swift UI and our language Swift. We don't need core data or tests for the project. Then hit next and now select a location where to save the project. Then press create and your app will be launched. We can hide some of the unnecessary tabs. And here we have the default app that's created whenever you launch an iOS app. So we have the app name, my first home. Then we have the project folder. We have my first home app a struct and we have another file the content view currently the app just says hello world then we have our assets and our preview content so let's go to our app the top level file here we can see project details so we can see things like our app name and our ios version in this version, we're using iOS 15.2 for iPhone or iPad. And for the simulator, it's best to use a real device. But if you want to test on a real device, then you have to have the Apple developer account, which is $99 a month. So if you don't have that, then just use the simulator. Okay, we are going to select a phone here for the simulator. All right, so next we need to go into the signing and and capabilities tab and make sure you have a team selected. Then here, select your target, which is your app. And then we're going to add the HomeKit accessory. So we're going to add HomeKit to the target. So for that, we have to click on the button capability. Then here in capabilities, we're going to search for HomeKit. Enabling the HomeKit capability allows your app to interact with HomeKit accessories and create home configurations. So we're going to double click on HomeKit in order to add it to our list here. Okay, so now we have HomeKit added to our project. So we'll be able to use HomeKit capabilities. Join me in our next lecture where we will continue the project. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to download the HomeKit simulator for our app so that way we can develop and test the app on different devices. So join me in your project under the root file and then the tab signing and capabilities. Here, because we added HomeKit as a capability to our app target, we can now download the HomeKit simulator. Now you only have to do this once for all of your apps. So you just have to click on this button and it will direct you to your default browser where you have to sign in with your developer account. This can be a free account. And then you can download the HomeKit simulator. This will be a new app. So it will be an app that you'll have on your computer just like Xcode is an app on your computer. It's called the HomeKit Accessory Simulator and it looks like this. Okay, so we have the HomeKit Accessory Simulator. Here, you're going to see your accessories that are available. First 
accessories that are found like a MacBook Pro and then accessories that you can create yourself like I have here my light and then I have light 2. So I've created two lights previously. So to build an accessory you just have to go to this plus button in the bottom left hand corner. You can add a new accessory or bridge or add a bridged accessory. So if you select new accessory here you can give your accessory a name such as we can call this my light 3. You can have a manufacturer and a model name. I'm just going to put in some samples here. A serial number, a setup code, and a category. So we have different accessories, air conditioners, air purifier, bridge, dehumidifier, door, door lock, fan, faucets, garage door opener, heater, humidifier, light bulb, other outlet, programmable switch, security system, sensor, shower systems, sprinklers, switch, thermostat, window, and window covering with more added over time. So you can choose your category and then your accessory type IP camera or video doorbell as well. So I'm just going to choose light bulb. Okay, then I am going to hit finish. That's going to add a new accessory to my list. And here we have it under doorbells because I selected my accessory type as a video doorbell. So if you have that selected, then it's going to be added under this doorbells category. So just take note of that. So here, once you've created an accessory, like light three, you can switch on or off. You have a setup code, so a QR code that can be scanned for this accessory. You have your pairings, connections, identifier, setup ID, configuration number, state number. You can have a category as well, like light bulb, and primary service as well. So primary service, we have accessory information, camera stream management, doorbell, microphone, motion sensor, none, or speaker. Then you can also have optional things like an IP camera and then accessory information, a microphone, speaker, so that's because we made it a doorbell. So if you make it a doorbell, it will get some of these select properties. So it all depends on the type of accessory that you add. For example, let's say I add an air purifier and I call this my, my air. Then I hit finish. Note I'm not selecting an accessory type this time. So it will just get added to my general accessories. So now we have my air. And here we have the accessory information. And then we can add a new service to this my air. All right? So we can have a longer list this time. That's because now we're not selecting from accessories, but we're selecting from services, which are like a sensor or a battery or a switch. All right, so we have accessories, then we have services for each accessory. And the type of service that you add depends on the accessory. So if I have a light here, which I created earlier, by default, a light is going to have an on off property, a brightness, a hue, and a saturation property. All right, so you can remove some of these properties if you don't want them. But some properties are required, like on, off. You have to have that for a light bulb. You can also add characteristics. All right, so you can add things like brightness, carbon dioxide detected. So now we have a long list of characteristics, which is even longer than services, like the status, the target, the version, the types, the current state, and more. So for a light bulb, I might add something like brightness. All right, then I can hit finish and now we have brightness back in here. So this sets the brightness of the light bulb. And again, you can remove that if you don't want the brightness property. So each of your accessories can have services and also characteristics. So I could still add a service to the light bulb or I can add characteristics. So for our purposes, let's just create a simple light that just has an on-off switch. That's it. 
So we'll keep it simple and then over time you can build more accessories with more characteristics and services. So now we know how to download the HomeKit simulator, how to add an accessory to the HomeKit simulator, and also how to configure each accessory. All right, so join me in the next lecture where we'll continue the project. Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we are going to get started with adding homes to our HomeKit app. So the first thing we have to do is build a HomeKit home manager. So we need to have a way to handle adding homes and adding accessories. And we can do that with the HomeKit manager, which we will store in a HomeKit store. So let's go into our project. And here you can see we have two Swift files. We have the My First Home app file and we also have the content view file. So let's create another file and this is going to manage our HomeKit storage. So I'm going to select my project folder and add a new file. This will be a Swift file and we're going to call this HomeKit storage. Make sure the target is selected to be your app. And then a new file will be created called HomeKit storage in your project folder. At the top of the file, I'm going to import HomeKit. That way we can use the HomeKit capabilities. Then we'll define a class called HomeKit storage. This will be of type NS object and observable object, as well as home kit home manager delegate. This is an interface that the home manager uses to communicate changes to the state of the home network. I'm also going to import combine to the top of the file. Then here I'm going to create a published variable called homes, which is going to be of type list of type home kit home. So this comes from HomeKit. It's the primary unit of living space typically composed of rooms organized into zones. So an HM home represents a home. Then we're going to initialize an empty list. Next step, we're going to build a private variable called the manager. This will be our home manager. So the HM home manager is the manager for a collection of one or more of a user's homes because one user can have multiple homes. Next we'll have a function to load the manager. So we're going to check if manager is nil. We're going to assign them by initializing a manager. So we use init which is implemented by subclasses to initialize a new object immediately after memory for it has been allocated. Then we're going to set the delegate of the manager. The delegate is what receives updates on the collection of homes. So we're going to assign the delegate to be self, which means this class. Okay, next let's handle updating and adding homes, as well as adding accessories. So I'm going to create a function called add home. Whoops, let's just spell it correctly, func add home. To add a home, we can grab the manager and use its function add home. So this comes from HomeKit, allowing you to add a new home to this home manager. We're going to add it with a name. So here we can put it in a name like new home, and then we can add in a unique identifier for each of our homes. So this function UUID it allows us to generate a random ID for each home and then we'll just insert it into the string using string formatting. All right, then I'm going to pass in week self into a list which will give us a home or possibly an error message if we got a problem. All right, so then we want to use a guard let statement to make sure that 
we were able to add the home, otherwise we'll return. And let's just make sure we have a curly bracket. And we want the curly brackets around return. So just put these into curly brackets instead of parentheses. All right, next up, we're going to be able to print out all of the homes so we can see them in the console if we like. We can also call self and we can update the homes. So we can call self dot update homes passing in self dot manager. Right, so let's see. For update homes, we're going to use the function called home manager did update homes. This tells the delegate that the home manager updated its collection of homes. And we're going to pass in to this function self dot manager our manager okay then we are going to create this home manager did update homes so we're going to create a function for it and it will take in a manager of type home manager and inside that function we'll take self dot homes and assign it to the homes from the manager so that way we can update value if there ever is a new home. All right, there we go. Now we're able to add a home. Let's also add one more thing, adding an accessory. So I'm going to make a function add accessory. This function is going to take in an accessory of type home accessory. This is a home automation accessory like a garage door opener or a thermostat. We're also going to have two home ID, so each of our homes has an ID, and we want to know to which home are we adding this accessory. Then we're going to grab all of our homes, and first we're going to find the first home with that ID. So we're going to look for the home in home.unique identifier is equal to the home ID. So we're finding the home that we want to add the accessory to. Then we're calling add accessory. And in here, we're going to pass in our accessory. And I'm going to just remove the completion handler. So we're going to add the accessory to the home. And then we can handle as well if there's some kind of error. We can print out the error if it appears. We can also print out the accessory. All right, so that is going to allow us to add the accessory to the home. Otherwise, you can print out what happened if there was a problem. Okay, so that is how you can manage your HomeKit storage. So we're going to have our homes, our home manager, loading, adding a home and updating the manager from the manager to our storage and also adding an accessory. Join me in our next lecture. We're going to continue the project and learn how to add homes to our app. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to add homes to our app. So join me in your Xcode project we currently have our app file, our content view, and a file for storage with a home manager. Let's go into our project folder and add a new file. We're going to call this file our homes list page model. It's also going to contain a homes list page view. so. Let's go ahead and just call it the homes list page. We can keep it as a Swift file. We will add Swift UI views as well. We're going to have several elements in this one file. So let's just keep it as a Swift file for now for the template iOS. And we're going to call the file the homes list page. And we're going to make sure that the target for your app is selected. Then hit create and you'll have the homes list page added to your project folder. All right, here we are going to import instead of foundation, Swift UI. 
because we will put to use Swift UI in this file. But first, we are going to build out the model for the homes list page. So I'm going to create a class called the homes list page model, which will be of type observable object. This is the type alias for the combined frameworks type for an object with a publisher that emits before the object has changed. In here, we're going to create a published variable called homes, which will be of type home list item. This will be a new type that we're going to create. So let's define a home list item in a struct. So the structure is called home list item. Each home list item will have an ID of type UUID, a universally unique value that can be used to identify types, interfaces, and other items. As well, each home will have a name, which will be of type string. So that is the type that we've defined the home list item. Next, let's create a private variable home kit storage. This is going to use our type home kit storage. We're going to initialize the class with a home kit storage argument from our type home kit storage, which is the class we created in the previous lecture. We're going to set self dot home kit storage to equal the argument that's passed in to the constructor. Then we have to write functions to handle adding homes and managing them. So let's first create a function to add a home. For this, we just grab the home kit storage and we call its add home function, which is what we created previously. If you go to home kit storage, you can see it has this function add home. Now in the constructor, we're also going to call manage homes. So let's create that private function manage homes. This is going to use the home kit storage and grab its homes, which is a published variable. We're going to map, which will publish the value of a key path. We're mapping the homes in the home kit storage. We're going to take the homes and map them by taking each home in, in it where the ID is the home dot unique identifier and the name is the home dot name. So that way we're going to have each home with the UUID and the string. All right, then we have that homes dot map. After that, I'm going to call dot assign to republish elements received from a publisher by assigning them to a property marked as a publisher. I'm going to assign to my homes. Okay, so here now our manage homes is valid. We're taking home kit storage, taking its homes, and we're mapping for all of the homes there. We're going to map for each home the ID and the name. So that way we can manage all of the homes and their properties, which we've now defined. Right, so that is how you can add homes to the app. Next up, we're going to display the available homes. So join me in the next lecture. Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to display the available homes in a HomeKit app. So join me in your file, the homes list page, where we have a page model. Here, I'm going to add a struct for the actual views with SwiftUI. I'm going to call this my homes list page and it will be of type view. In here, we're going to have an observed object called model. This will use our homes list page model, which is in the file. We'll also have a state variable, which we're going to call the selected home, which is going to be of type UUID, initially nil. This will represent what home is currently selected. Next, we'll define the body of the view. We're going to have a list as the parent, and then we're going to put in a section 
with a header. We'll have here a horizontal stack with some text that says my homes. Then we're going to have a button which will go to the action of adding a home and it will have the text of add home. So we just have some header and a button. Next up, I'm going to add more to the section. I'm going to use the for each to go through all of my homes with each of their IDs and call this the home. And I'm going to display each home. Just make sure you have here a curly bracket for the for each loop. Okay, so in here for each home, we're going to create a navigation link. And here we can pass in some optional arguments. So I'm just going to remove the default ones that it gave me and pass in my own. So I need a destination. We're going to create a home page view container, passing in a home ID, which we'll build shortly. We'll also have a tag for the navigation link, which will be home.id. The selection will be the selected home currently. Then we need the text. We'll just display each home name. And for this ID, just make sure you use a dot ID. Okay, so we're going to loop through each home and display a navigation link for it. Now for a navigation link, by the way, let's see, we have here the destination, the tag, and the selection. Okay, then we have the navigation link closing. So make sure you close that navigation link and close the for each loop. Okay, next I am going to create the home page view container. So let's build that out. Before we do that, just remove this extra parentheses, by the way. The navigation link is actually already closed here. So we just need the selection to be closed and then the for each loop to be closed. Next up, we're going to create the home page view container. So let's go into our project folder and create a new file. This will be a Swift file for iOS and we will call the file the home page. Make sure the target of your app is selected and hit create. In here, we are going to import home kit as well as Swift UI. Right, then let's create a struct for the home page view container. This is going to be of type view and it's going to have a variable home ID of type UUID. And it's also going to reference our home kit storage. So we can create a variable for that as well. So I'm going to create an environment object, private variable called the home kit storage of type home kit storage, which is the class that we created together. Now to make this container conform to the protocol view, we have to create the body, which will be of some view. And then we can just put in here a section or a list for now. And then we can put in all of our content into that list. So this is where we'll actually display the homes and their accessories and handle more of that functionality like displaying the available accessories and adding accessories to the view. So join me in the next lecture where we will continue the project and build more for working with accessories. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you want to watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only will you get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle. And it's on sale today. So buy it before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.